Hello everyone and welcome to our second panel here on our Simon Virtual Expo 20th Anniversary Special Edition. I am Elena, I'm joined here today by Thiago Aranha and Guilherme Goulart. How are both of you today? I'm doing well, still recovering from the last panel, the 20, 20 years of Simon uh, and ready for more. How are you I'm today? doing doing well myself as well i'm happy to be here um such a such an interesting panel right simon insider what are we gonna cover today insider stuff exactly well um let's just wait a bit for people to join in let's wait a couple of minutes um in the meantime i guess today we will cover many different topics about many different games. Yeah, and to answer Mark, no. Hello, Mark. <laughs> How are you? Stay tuned. I refuse. Guy, <laughs> are you the one typing? I'm hearing, I'm hearing some. Nope. Nope, that's me. Ah, okay. Also, to try not to breathe on your on your mic. My mic is a bit on your on your nose. How about that? Yeah. That's much better. All right. Uh, how how was the panel? Was it twenty years uh, panel for you, then? Well, it was a bit shorter than that, but it was fun. Uh, yeah, just rambling, rambling with with Dust and Michael. It's it's always nice. Yeah, it was it was it was really cool. It was really nostalgic and sweet and i think everyone who was watching got that vibe because people were being really i don't know sweet in the comments it, well it's it been 20 years i really like this and that thank you for this and that and it, it it really makes me just kind of nostalgic for whenever we would hold panels like this at uh, our own uh, physical Simon Expo, right, in, in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, it, I was always looking forward to those because um, they were more of intimate experience. You could play games with people. You could just, you know, have a, a, a panel like this and talk about what's coming up. And then you would walk down the, the, the hallway and then sit down to, you know, show people what's coming up. It was always like a very, very gratifying experience. Uh, it's very cool. Kind, kind of nostalgic for those. Yeah, and it's interesting to recognize the same people we would run into at the Expo. They're all there at the at the comment section, you know, have Mark, you have Mike Pierce, you know, all the all the guys we're we're used to 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 playing with. Yeah, miss you. Yeah, all when guys. we showed the video, when we showed the video, there were a couple of pictures of past expos, and I saw a couple of comments of people saying like, "Oh, that's me! I'm in this picture." Yeah, yeah, watching that video, it, it kind of really it, it pained me quite a bit. Like to, just to, oh, I remember how that was. You know, everybody around the table and that you know that buzz in the air with excitement yeah can't wait to get back to that yeah i, I just had a comment from mark so i i remember that very vividly when we were playing mazamora but that was my very first simon expo when we were playing mm -hmm. you know through the night there we were just bringing a bunch of new stuff to show people it was very cool <laughs> well um i think we can start we, sure. we already have um, a good audience with us, and um, we will begin with, well, past, past present, and future, and uh, in order. So let's start with some of our past projects that are still in the works, and maybe you guys can update us on that, and potential backers perhaps watching. Mm -hmm. Well, sure. let's start with Massive Darkness, and I'll direct this one to Guilherme. Mm -hmm. All right, that's that's my baby. I've been working on this project for um, I think a couple of years now, but, uh, since when I first started, but just prior to the Kickstarter. Um, just just an amazing ride, um, and it's interesting to see sort of coming towards the end of um, like of, of all the whole cycle. Right, the the production is already underway. Um, I've I've been sharing with people the pictures um, as we get from the factory. The you know the plastics being done, everything being kind of put together. It's um, it's an exciting sensation because we're so close to that moment when we're gonna ship this to backers, and I want to see, um, you know, they they just unbox and get you played. I mean, it's a it's a very ambitious project. It, it builds on Massive Darkness, the first one, which was already very grandiose, and then this one uh, mm -hmm. is is you know 
asymmetric classes and more expansions and just so much more, right? Um, you know, one thing I just wanted to talk because you talk about the excitement of, of getting ready to have their product done. And it's been interesting because people eventually would do their unboxings of the game. And like me and you, we've been working on this project kind of together because I'm in Singapore, so I get all the samples and we and we, we, we meet to go over them and make sure everything is right. And we, we've basically been we've been doing a boxing of the game because like uh, one week I will get oh here are the here are the cards and then I will get a tray and then I will get a miniature and then I will get like a rule book and, and slowly I'm going to add these things into the same box and it kind of starts to become the actual box of, of what the game will be and and it's always exciting to kind of see the game literally taking shape in front of you as you add each of those cool bits to it and you know, making sure everything is fitting and working and looking cool and, and all that. And of course, I go through the trouble of saying, can you take that other punch board from last time? Try to put that there. We just keep trying all these configurations and just try to, yeah. to really like, um, like we really bring this um, as our experience as consumers, right? Ade and I will always kind of play around and, and remove components and put components back on and try to make the, the best and most satisfying composition we can. So it's, it's exciting to be at that stage after so many, so much time, just getting files ready, you know, play testing. Um, so it's, it's very cool that we're uh, at this stage now. Um, but yeah, I think um, we already commented to people we're looking forward to fulfill um, the estimate is uh, by the end of this year. Um, we are still publishing a number of updates for people. Of course, uh, we're showing some of the samples that we got earlier on the process that you uh, show them the boxes they hadn't seen yet or the punch boards they hadn't seen yet. Um, and we still have a few more development diaries. People have been asking for some, uh, some interesting ideas there on the comments. Uh, we're already preparing all of those for them. Yeah. Really cool. Um, I on that end about the boxing. I hear you just made it bigger because the box could not contain the amount of massive darkness. Is, the it's it's very, of it's the very massive. It's fittingly yeah. massive. Yeah, the, the box was why originally planned for the same size as the as the previous one. Uh, this one does have a lot uh, more to it. Um, it still fits in a collect shelf. I saw some people asking that last time, uh, but it's deeper, so it's it's a it's a tall box. Yeah, it was interesting. Like me, uh, uh, me going through all the components and trying to find the, the optimal way to fit everything and make it Playing user a friendly. A lot of no, Tetris is a skill that comes in handy every day of my professional life. Uh, just trying to fit things and 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 it's interesting because because. Now we're at, the, at this late stage of, of the of the production, and like basically, in the whole first part, you look at the game as a producer. But then, as you get to, towards the end, you start looking at the game as a gamer because you, you get that box and you, and you kind of experiences it, it as okay, I'm I'm a player who just got this game, and what do I want to see? What do I what am I looking for? And and you're trying to make those adjustments from a gamer's perspective, not from a producer's perspective anymore. So it's it's an interesting shift. And adding to that, what just what uh, David mentioned before, that we do have a Massive Darkness 2 campaign in China now for Chinese backers, like a localized campaign, which is also doing incredibly well. So that's that's also exciting to see that, you know, uh, second breath of life, just continuing with that, just bringing that to more people around the globe. Well, um, let's move on then to our next project. And this one, I think, might come as a surprise to some people, but can you update us on Trudvang? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, on Trudvang, um, as as we we uh, notified people uh, throughout the process, it's uh, it's always whenever it comes to Trudvang, it always um, entails more content creation and review than other a uh, other you know usual board games. Um, the um, we finished the layout for the for the two huge books, the rule book and the book of sagas. Uh, so that's all being laid out, and we are doing a review pass on them. Uh, and the cool thing is that we we will share the rulebook uh, with backers once we finish our pass, uh, just just as a way to show you guys uh, where the, the the newest system has landed. Um, and yeah, basically continuing the editing work on the expansions. It's just it has so much interconnectivity between how the cards and the stories and the board relate to each other that it's a process in itself. Uh, very much led by Isa and the development team, like they're they're championing that front. Um, but it's it's going to be something extremely special. It's super cool. Yeah, the, a lot of care and work went into that one, right? 
Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You want to get it right, and it's going to take the time it, it has to take. You know. Yeah. Well, moving on to our next project, and we're now entering 2021 because it's our first project of the year, the animation collection. Uh, that's. Uh, I think it's particularly um, close to me I'm, because I'm one of the designers for one of the three games, right? I, I designed along with Fred uh, Scooby-Doo, the board game. And it's interesting for me to be sitting on the review uh, room session as a designer, not as a producer or developer. So it's it's interesting to see like a few steps remote from the process, uh, seeing what was the design intent and then the development and how it all came together as a product. Um, so I'm, I'm particularly excited about that. I, I even got myself a few extra copies to hand out to family. Uh, this is a very, very <laughs> accessible game, um, as well as Mayhem, just as accessible and as, as engaging. Uh, we are at a stage where we are uh, reviewing the final files, um, and it's uh, just coming, all, I mean, all coming together as well. And uh, we've been showing people, um, if you follow the Kickstarter and the updates, you can see the latest painted uh, final versions of the figures. Um, uh, on the Kickstarter update, so that's also very. I'm very looking forward to that one. Yeah, it's been very exciting to get those samples in the in the office. Like when you you get like the final production sample of a painted miniature, like like that. Like it, it's it's such a cool toy, and like everybody just wants to keep them around, around their table as kind of display pieces and and all that. And 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 the whole the glow in the dark stuff. You know, as soon as it arrives, we take it to to a room. You know, turn off turn off the lights and and see how see how those things work. It, it's been it's a fun project. That's a very different project from what we normally do, right? These are pre-painted yeah. and yeah, pre-painted glow in the dark. It's, it's three games in one Kickstarter. It's 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 Warner. It's it's a licensed. It's a iconic licensed uh, set of games. Uh, it's very different. And this is the one project where my parents are backers. <laughs> this, they're like, yeah, I know that. <laughs> That's Seriously, cool. that's yes. really cool. And of course, my dad calls me to say, "Hey, how how can we um, how do we add stuff to it? How do I get the updates?" It's, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, okay. So moving on to Zombicide, Undead or Alive. Zombicide, Undead or Alive. Yeah, that, that's coming along. Uh, it's chugging along quite quite well. Uh, Rebecca is the lead producer on that, and she's working very hard uh, on. Like checking all the files, like we're basically trying to close all the all the graphic files while the factory is preparing the the production samples. I think we, we've just begun to 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 get we're getting the, the plastics finalized, uh, the molding, so we, so we can start production soon. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 shaping shaping very well. I think it's it's a it's a very nice new take on zombie side. I, I really like all that the team has done with with that setting. Uh, from the gameplay perspective and from the visual perspective, like just the little touches, like how the dashboard with all the, the wooden things, the graphic design that uh, Matthew's team did on that, uh, it's, it's coming along well. And yeah, we're, we're getting the samples for the miniatures, everything looking looking good as expected. Uh, and yeah, I expect it should be it should be coming along on time. Uh, we, we did announce recently about the the, the, the pledge manager, uh, which was pushed back more than normally for, for our, our our campaigns, and we have revealed that we we're, we're shifting the for the next uh, pledge manager to the backer kit system. Uh, so that's going to be a different pledge manager. You know, always trying to optimize the experience and make it better overall. So the zombie side Nether Live pledge manager should come out soon on backer kit. Uh, and that will, will be one more step towards fulfilling this thing. Yes. Um, on this end, people had, this perhaps is the game that people had the most time to back we ever <laughs> made. Yeah, yeah. There's no, no, no reason to complain about missing out because it's, yeah, the late pledging has been open for a while and it will, yeah, we have plenty of chance to, to, to get in. So the, the whole, Pledge manager uh, packing slip process is going to run right into the the, the, the production, so yeah, we're gonna get in while while you can, because uh, the train is running. I just want my train on the board to just run over the the mass of zombies, and uh, I remember that there's so much, and you just flip, and everyone who's there in the zone just boom gone. That okay, feeling okay. is amazing. 
I love the train just because of that. That that alone sells it for me. <laughs> yeah, and one one cool thing we're going through now, right now that Rebecca is working on, because we have the whole uh, Giz and Guns uh, campaign expansion. Uh, so it has all those uh, objectives that stand on on the on the board, and you you're kind of exploring and trying to find find out things. And so right now we're looking at all those things and trying to see how we can spice up the objective cards with little uh, visual visual things like show more of what's being talked about in the campaign in the actual cards, like add, add little twists. So yeah, it's the, the final you know, icing on the cake to make it really, really shine and come to life. I see a couple of Simon addicts on the comments just saying, okay, so far four out of four, let's see what else they got. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I saw people commenting that it's like zombie side is their go to for family setting. It's become mine as well. Like he didn't used to be, but my son is now old enough that we're uh, I've, I'm, uh, he's seven. So now we got second edition. That's what we're playing as a family now. It's super cool. Yeah. <laughs> really cool. Um, okay. And then we go to another great family game, if you ask me. <laughs> That that is for sure a great family game. Uh, even my my four year old daughter, she's she, she, she's learned all the names of all the characters just by from playing with the with the with the minis. And so because she will see me working on some file and she'll go, oh, that's Black Cat. And then she she, she runs back and then she gets the miniature and she runs back. That's Black Cat. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's it's a fun experience. But yeah, my other X Men, the thing that's it's been consuming. Uh, most of my waking hours and some of the non-waking hours as well, uh, because we're really uh, <clears throat> like really getting ready to to start production very soon, uh, and that means it's crunch time on finalizing the graphic files, you know, proofreading everything, making sure everything makes sense, everything is right, uh, trying to snap out uh, mistakes. I, I just caught one today that you know one of those where you, where you look and you kind of your heart stops. And you go, I, I can't believe I allowed this to stay here for so long. I'm glad I, <laughs> glad I found this. It's fixed. I had to talk to a bunch of people. I'm not going to talk about what it was. Nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing major, but it, it would have been it would have been embarrassing if that if that went through. Yeah, we're, we're not know, curious at all. We're not curious at all, Dan. Just yeah, yeah, and you and you'll know that sometimes those things do 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 go through and and we feel horrible <laughs> afterwards. But yeah, hopefully. Uh, Thankfully, that's why we have processes to look at things and look at things and look at things until you snap those things out. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's looking great and and it's it's so so much fun to finally you know get all the like the, all the leaflets and boxes and all those files and share with the designers and for, for them to really see the game in, in its finished form because they've been looking at the game for so long as a as a dev thing. Uh, so yeah, it's really come together well. We should be getting like plastic samples very soon like that's that's we are at the end of that process so i'm looking forward to really making sure that you know all those special plastic effects are, are working as intended you know because that's that's a big step we took on this campaign with the like fire effects and, and ice effect and transparent effect and silver and purple and it's, it's a bunch of different different things so I'm really excited about that one. It's coming along very well. Uh, I think we, I do not anticipate any delays on that. Uh, and it's very exciting to see that like people who got the, the two wave shipping are starting to get their, their stuff. Uh, Asian backers have already got their, their first wave core box. Australia is going to sh start receiving their pledges uh, next week, maybe. Uh, if everything goes well, we should start shipping next week. And then soon enough, the rest of the world will will get there. So, uh, it's it's a lot of work, but it's kind of nice to have this staggered uh, delivery because you you have more time of people opening stuff and discovering the game, and then there's a second wave of people opening stuff and discovering the game. So, exciting. Yeah. Um, well, and that covers the past. So now we move into the present. Our upcoming present. Kickstarter <laughs> campaign. <laughs> For masters of the universe. So, so, so guy, what, what is consuming your every waking moment and some of the sleeping ones as well? There you <laughs> go. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> uh, we're super excited for Master of the Universe coming up to Kickstarter in uh, September 14th, just around the corner. It feels like it's like only two more days. Um, 
we are um, finalizing everything for the campaign itself. There's a lot um, to this campaign. And of course, I'm here pausing myself thinking, what can I speak? What can I talk about? What I can't. Um, uh, I think uh, by now, some of the gameplay videos are already out. People can see how the, the game kind of uh, looks like and plays like. Uh, for me personally, it has been a joy to team up with Michael Chanel again. I mean, um, I worked very close with him on the song of Western Fire. I was the lead producer. He was the designer, uh, the lead designer, along with Eric. And now it's Michael and Leo. So it's it's very um, it's very good for me to kind of uh, do that that uh, partner up again. Um, and uh, we also have just an incredibly talented team doing art, sculpt, graphic design, like everything. Every every aspect of this game is being is being crafted with love and and care. Um, I mentioned this before that. We, um, we even kind of, uh, when looking for artists and sculptors, like we were searching for people who had a connection to, to masters, right? Uh, which, which is true for many people in our age. Uh, and then they bring in not only their technical skills, but also their passion. It's super cool. It's very rewarding to see when they, when they add the little details or, um, you know, something about the figure or the pose or the art or the finish that kind of connects you with an experience they had growing up playing with the toys. Um, so it's being very lovingly crafted. Um, and I'm super excited to see the initial reactions. Um, very excited to kind of show what we have in store, which is a lot. Right? You know us, you know Simon. There's a lot in store for this. We just yeah. revealed recently Castle Gray School. How is that making something that huge on the production side? Well, all I know is I, I, I wasn't really following that, and one day I arrive at the at the <laughs> office, and and that sample is there. I just look at me. I think it's, I, I never had the 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 gray school castle when I was a kid. Like my my cousins had it, and I was always jealous of of them with that beautiful playset. So it was really exciting to have that. Okay, now I have my now I have mine. You know, <laughs> fine, I'll, fine. I'll make my own. You know, it's that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, and all the, the the toy aspect of it is it's really cool. But take it away. You're the one doing it. <laughs> Yeah, no, and, and you, I think you touched on a very important point. Uh, for this, for this project in particular, it was not just, of course, um, a, a a combat miniatures type of game, but we we really had the product in our minds. Like we wanted to kind of replicate that playset feel, where you want people to feel like you were taking your toys as you played back then, and and have that kind of uh, presence on 3D. Uh, on the game, and that's why even even from the very early stages, we knew we wanted to have uh, Castle Grace School there. We knew we wanted to be twist scale, so we really, uh, you know, we went back to to seeing when characters are standing in front of it to see how they would relate, you know, translate to our miniatures. Uh, that's being a, a, a very important drive point for us, and we also wanted to make sure that the castle is not only a beautiful set piece that that does, uh, you know, bring up the the nostalgia and the, and the memories that people have, but that it has functionality has gameplay attached to it. Uh, so people, you know, you'll be able to deploy the, the laser turrets or the, the the ladders around it or, and even the door, even the drawbridge, right? It's a hinging piece, they can come down, uh, it clicks closed. Uh, it's That's also going to be all driven by the scenario. So whenever those things happen, they happen for a reason. It's something that you as an attacker or the defender uh, have caused that to happen, right? Um, it's um, it's a very exciting sort of uh, new territory to go, where we have this big set piece that you know, uh, kind of like uh, as we started to do with Cthulhu, it has functionality added, you know, to your gameplay, enhances your experience, um, and really, really um, offers a new uh, way to play the game. So this offers the castle defense mode, um, and uh, I'm just super excited to see and to show how this all all these things come together. Uh, Mattel has been a great partner. We've been frequently uh, talking to them. It's been very fun because there's all, you know, there's so much from this IP that you can draw from, from the different animations, from the from the toys, from the different toy lines. We're always, you know, honing with them back and forth on, on details and can we use this, can we use that, can we shape it like this, can we show it like that? It's very, uh, it's been a very collaborative, a true collaborative project. Um, there's a question in the comments I'd like you to address before we move forward. Is this master game going to be a small project, or will there be expansions? <laughs> um, um. We, have, we have a we have a saying: make no small plans. They have no magic to stir man's blood. I, I can't put any better than that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's enough of an of an answer. I mean, you guys know us. You guys are here. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, I believe so. We have the, the pre launch page already already out mm -hmm. now, right? So people like should go to go to the pre launch page, uh, register, so they will be notified as soon as the Kickstarter launches, so we don't miss anything. Uh, and and yeah, and, and that will be our 49th Kickstarter, if you can believe it. Yeah. So. Correct. Coming on September 14th. Right. Well, right, right. we have reached future territory now. So this is our yeah. 49th Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the future is a nebulous thing. So this is the 49th Kickstarter. Uh, what do we do for the 50th? Like it's that's a quite a milestone. So we do have big plans for the for the 50th. Uh, it's something I'm working very hard on, <laughs> and a lot of people are working very hard on doing a lot of stuff for, because it's not going to be small. As I said, we, we don't make small plans, <laughs> and sometimes we make very big plans. So, uh, well, I'm not ready to really divulge it, but it's very exciting. It's it's, it's interesting because, in a way, it's, I think it would be very surprising and very predictable. It's 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 a mix of it's obvious once you once people learn about it, it will be obvious, but it's it's going to be it's going to surprise a lot of people how 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 we're going to take that. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. It's going to be cool. Look for it, but I don't think that's not the time to talk about it yet. We have other stuff in the future that I think we can get a clearer glimpse at at this point. Yeah. So since the 50th Kickstarter is in mystery for now, let's perhaps discuss some plans that are a bit, a little bit more in the future. And in that regard, we have something very special to show you today. And then we'll invite a very special guest <laughs> to our live stream. All right. Let, let's take a look. Before yeah. we, let's just invite our very special guest, Andrea Carvezio, game designer to our live, live stream. Hello, Andrea. Hey, hello. hello. And, I mean, Welcome. sorry Ciao. for every. Ciao. Sorry for everyone that was waiting for Kino Reeves to join. <laughs> oh, that's. Sorry, oh, it's I just. Did that, didn't I? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're also breathtaking, Andrea. Don't worry. <laughs> Oh yeah, so that's that's the project uh, that has been consuming my daily <laughs> hours and sometimes not just the daily ones. <laughs> yeah, I think one thing we need to just establish from the from the beginning is, uh, as you saw in the teaser, this is not a card game because a few a long time ago actually we announced a, a cyberpunk card game we were working on, uh, but plans change and like we saw what people wanted out of us in terms of cyberpunk and so plans shifted game shifted and so actually what is coming in the future is cyberpunk gangs of night city which is a board game designed by andrea carvesio andrea carvesio eric lang alex schneberger uh, and uh, roger frezzetta so it's like yeah, uh, it's a all effort. team at work yes yes i mean uh, it's, uh, I mean, you saw the trailer, uh, you saw the trailer. Uh, it's an area control game. We have our gangs uh, fighting uh, for controlling Night City and especially to gain their, to be the 
gang with most uh, street reputation uh, at the end of the game. And the city will react to what you do. Uh, we try to recreate a living city that does things while you are fighting for it. That's, uh, I think, the, the most I can tell now about the game <laughs> without being too specific uh, with the mechanics and stuff. But it's going to be great, unique. Uh, it's going to, p- to fit uh, in our line of uh, dudes on the map uh, uh, games, I think, uh, really, really well. You, you will recognize You will recognize the Simon. You will recognize... The, the bound, the strong bound with the video game and CD Projekt Red uh, that is being with us uh, all of those I mean, now I think it's almost, we, we started working to it uh, now quite a lot of time ago, so it's been a ride, still working on it, still fine tuning making it better and uh, you will, I'm, I'm sure it will be a blast for everybody trying the game in terms of the production, uh, the it's being, production has been is being led by Kenneth from the Singaporean team, and he's a he's a huge fan of the of the video game, the RPG, uh, and all that. So it's been interesting, like following him, and he's you no know, he's in close contact with City Project Red, uh, which is it's very cool like, to, to to be getting assets from them, you know, three D files and all those amazing concept arts that they that they do. Uh, and you know, discussing the lore and how to how we can implement things, uh, how things work, and the characters and the gangs and aspects of the city itself. Like as Andrea said, we, we want it to be you know it's Gangs of Night City. That the city is an integral part of the game itself. Uh, and so, well, considering the board and all that, uh, miniature sculpting. Uh, it's been fantastic to play around with all those elements because you know there's such a rich a kind of library of things they do with characters in that setting, you know, all the the fashion, the, the cybernetic enhancements, and and you know, how each gang kind of kind of looks and, and behaves. So translating all of that into miniatures has been like a daunting task, uh, which has been going on very well. You saw a brief glimpse of some of the some of the stuff we made in that teaser, but there's a lot more behind the scenes. And it's also a fun and different relationship um, on this one because uh, the uh, CD Projekt are also game designers, game developers, right? So it's mm-hmm. interesting to have that connection that we are uh, designers of a type of media and type of product. They are de- developers of video games. Uh, unlike um, not all of our licenses have a gaming side to them. So it's very cool to connect with them on that level. Like uh, um, I remember I was part of some of those calls too where um, they really get into the details, you know, the, the deep into the structure of why things are shaped the way they are and what kind of sensation they are creating, creating the gamers. So it's uh, it's definitely something uh, that produces interesting choices for the game. I'm, I'm, I'm debating how much I can talk about it because I've played this one, Andre, and the <laughs> I've played and it's so cool. Like there's there's um, there's so much to, to go into and I'm like, um, yeah. I think what, yeah, what can tell people, it is a, a big box strategy game with miniatures um, as you, as you have come to expect from us. Just like um, we mentioned before, the plans changed based on what uh, our perception of what what people want out of a Simon and Cyber, uh, Cyberpunk project. Yeah, it, it, it will be it will be a Kickstarter as as said on on the on the teaser. Uh, it's not coming right now. There's still some time ahead until we're ready for it. Uh, but yeah, lots to build still. Yeah. And. Just to clarify, yeah, Cyberpunk is not the 50th, 50th, as we mentioned before. This is Cyberpunk is later in the future, fittingly so. Yeah, but, yeah, but not so. too much later in the future. That's not true. not late, not late enough for production. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, what Guy was saying is totally correct. It doesn't happen often that not only you have meetings with people that really understand what a designer job is because they do it on a different field, but it's like uh, one of the first and most pressing question we got was, oh, when you have the first prototype ready, can you send it to us? We want to play. We want to put yeah. it in in our common room and start playing. And that doesn't usually happen with licenses. So it was, I mean, an honor and also a bit stressful to send everything. Because, oh, what if they don't like it? What if they, <laughs> what if they want it changed? And it was so good. 
I mean, it was so good to hear that. Oh yeah, yeah, we like it a lot. Yeah, might maybe change those two little things, but we like it. So well, I'm Dread happy that also the, <laughs> the the game designers at Project Red <laughs> like the game. Uh, Andre, if, if it serves any comfort, Plan B was to have Keanu Reeves design the board game. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, did he did he decline? I'm, well, I I'm hearing this for no, the first time right now. Any <laughs> projects like their game? It's fine. Oh. oh. Um, you talked a little bit about um the design uh, the um, the licensors sharing the feeling that the game should have, and uh, can you share with, with us what that is? What is the feeling players should have when playing this game? What were you trying to emulate? Yeah. Well. Uh... You will play in the shoes of a gang leader, so you you send people around uh, to firefight with other gangs or other things in the city, other people in the city, and you care about your people. Uh, so it's not a game where I mean, like, oh, okay, who cares? I just lost ten pieces in the board, uh, and the city. We, we try to portray the city as a living thing reacting to what you do. I think that's the, the main feeling uh, uh, that you have playing, that you don't play on uh, a board uh, that is just uh, something that is there to limit boundaries and territories and areas of control. Uh, you do stuff in the game, and the game, not only the other players, will react to what the players uh, will collectively do or what you do. I think that's the main feature of gameplay, and I really, if I go into more details, um, yeah, I can, I can see you, Tiago. I want, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll mute his mic, quick. <laughs> so uh, I'll stop here. But yeah, I think that's the the main feeling. You are the gang, uh, the boss of a gang, uh, and uh, playing uh, in a living city. Um, I I saw a question that I lost now because they're coming faster than I can keep track of them. But um, someone asked if this, if this is based on the video game or the RPG. And can you talk a little bit about your connection to both, I guess? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's mainly based on the video game. If you're familiar with the video game, you will find uh, the gangs uh, and, I mean, many other things that I should not mention, uh, but that you can imagine. Uh, so that's the world. Uh, that's the world. And in the video game, we see the gangs, but from a different perspective, from the perspective of the playing character, here you will see the gangs from their own perspective and their own struggle for reputation and power. And the, the lore of the video game is so deep uh, that actually it was quite easy to uh, immediately have an idea of how to differentiate each gang, how to really make them shine in different parts of the game. Uh, you know, sometimes it's not easy when you don't have enough information uh, on... Uh, uh, on the faction you are trying to develop uh, into your game. In this case, we had plenty of information, uh, more than enough to try to really convey uh, what it is to be the leader of... Uh, uh, I mean, Tiago, can I mention the names of the gangs? They are in the video game. The video game is open. <laughs> you, can, you can mention two. Two, okay. So <laughs> it's very different to be the leader of Maelstrom's from being the leader of Valentinos. Yes, you have gang members going around, taking control of zones, but uh, as a player, you will have two very, very different uh, playing experience. And that's it. Now people are trying to guess the other gangs in the comments. Oh, it's, it's the game. <laughs> it's okay. I mean... You know what's out there. Yeah, we have played the video game, right? <laughs> Well, um, you mentioned you have played it. Did it. I'm interested to hear a little bit about your per perspective from a gamer point of view. You mean when I played with Andre, you mean? Yes. Uh, so th that's always very interesting. Like we, um, um, I'm also working on some design projects, which I invited him to. So there's always the back and forth, right? Where you want to get, um, feedback from design peers as well, even inside the company, you want to get um, 
you know, um, a set of eyes from, from people who are looking at it from a system point of view. They are looking through how things uh, were created, how do they connect and what kind of, uh, not only consequences, but like I said, like kind of experiences they, they share. Um, I remember I did that as well with the team on Mayhem when I was designing Scooby-Doo. I would uh, connect to the LSU, I would play Mayhem, he would play Scooby-Doo. So it's always a very, uh, a very, um, productive, I would say, um, thing to do, just sharing the, you know, even early stages of design. And um, so I came into to the session with Andrea, not knowing a lot about the project. Um, I didn't play the video game. So I also had that kind of, I didn't have that lens installed when I played the, when I played uh, the board game. And uh, it's, it's my type of game, right? When I finished <laughs> playing the game, it's um, with the Italian team that with the team from, from, from Andrea there, I remember that my, my statement to him was, Andrea, if I had to make a purchase decision today, and I'm a guy who collects board games, I have all the, I have plenty of air control games. I have, I would say, I, when I finished, I said, if I had to, you know, just play this and decide whether I buy it or not, I would, I would get buy it without blinking, right? It's, it's, it does um, some some a few things that are different in this genre that really connects with uh, the type of games that I like. I don't know if I can say elaborate mm -hmm. on that. No. Oh. But uh, but yeah, it's it's um, it does have a twist on the genre. Um, it plays ex you know, exceedingly well into the into the um, into the theme. Uh, you can definitely you can definitely tell that the environment, the setting, really um, it's not only just a texture. It goes deep into the game. Uh, you know, it permeates the choices you make. It permeates what how the game reacts to you. I'm stretching my vague here. Hold <laughs> on. Well um, to, to, I don't know if the audience knows this, but a little bit of trivia about Guilherme. He is a Kickstarter backer himself. <laughs> and much like many of you, he's like that all of all or nothing guy. <laughs> he either goes all in or he doesn't even want it at all. <laughs> so your verdict, verdict is all in. Insta buy, all in. That's my verdict. Okay. <laughs> What about you? Um, Aranya, have you played it yet? No, I haven't. Mm. To be on, on my own games. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see if we have some questions in the comments because we are in our final minutes here. Unless you guys have something you want to share? Let's, oh, oh my God, people are asking so much stuff. I can't even. So many requests for specific games. Andrea, you will read this comment comment section later on. <laughs> Let's see. Don't you... Okay, everyone is speculating about the fiftieth fiftieth. Kickstarter also. My, my, my job here is done. Your job I, I, here I, is I done. can say that Aranya didn't play Cyberpunk because of 50th. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> what, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's go to just a couple of questions before we wrap this up. <laughs> New Arcadia Quest. Aha. I thought ah. I thought it was that was coming up. Uh, we mentioned briefly that um, here I go with my Vegas again. We mentioned briefly at Gen Con, I think, last year, that we're working on a new game in the Arcadia universe, aptly named Arcadia Redacted. We can't talk much about it right now. Uh, we did say that it's not a it's not a quest, right? It's not an Arcadia quest. It's a different game in the universe. Um, I've been working on it. Uh, it's it's a cool design between myself and Fred. Um, I don't know if I can say much more at this point. It's been it's been on design for some time. It is a uh, it's got a, a a big scope to it. So there's still some ways ahead. Uh, it is a big box uh, game coming in the universe. It's actually been not on just design, but also production has been moving on more things that make a game a game. Right? Uh, so. And then I get all the samples <laughs> and then we always trade notes. We always see how it's going. Um, Isa is the producer for that one. Uh, and we've, the three of us have been connecting often just to see how things are shaping up. Mm -hmm. Guys, this is the one I tried. 
It is the one you tried. Oh, that's an Eastern buy. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, the kind of game I love to play. <laughs> same. I've played it a couple of times as well. Love it. You, you broke right it. Right my alley. I, remember. I broke it. I broke it <laughs> twice. The first time, my character was so overpowered, it was a walk in the park. And the second part, <laughs> the second time, I insta died <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Uh, okay, can you give us some info on Zombicide's Army of the Dead? Uh, actually, so, so we're going to have a Zombicide panel tomorrow where I think we can go into a bit more depth there. Uh, the game, it, yeah, it's it's coming along very, very, very well. I think it's, it's well advanced. Uh, it, it was an, a very cool collaboration uh, with, with Zack Snyder and, and Netflix. Uh, to bring it to life because when we first learned about that, like it, it was like this is this is zombie side, you know. This uh, we, we, we almost don't need to adapt anything because that film is zombie side brought to the screen. So it was it was very fun to to bring that and infuse it into, into zombie side and make and kind of find new things that the film proposed for us to do with zombie side. Um, so I think I might be able to talk a, a bit more about it in the in the zombie side panel, but yeah, it's coming uh, and it is a more focused thing. It's, it's not a big sprawling, sprawling style. It's, it's, it's a more focused experience. Coming soon, coming but soon. not too soon, because you gotta make it. <laughs> Um, is Cyberpunk solo playable? Maybe it's too early to talk about this, but yeah, I think that's that's a bit picky, a bit, a bit not a bit minute. Uh, <laughs> yeah, first question: to... we, You know nothing about the game. Question one: Can <laughs> I play solo? <laughs> I mean, it's it it sense to reason, right? I mean. Uh... And not just the, like not just I think us as des designers, but a lot of people have picked up on solo gaming because of quarantine, right? So it's it's uh, ah I can't answer. You're uh, one to yeah. talk, right, Gaio? You just developed solo play for Arcadia, which we're by the way. I mean, sorry for the little parenthesis. Yes, we have a new update coming up with Riders and Dragons in the near future as well, uh, as well as the campaign, uh, the Bad Time Again campaign. That was also something we created for uh, online only. It's something that we're giving away for free for people who already own the Arcadia Quest uh, games. So that's also uh, coming soon with uh, with finished designing, playtesting. Um, it'll take a little while just to have the files ready. Uh, they all have to be print uh, friendly files for you guys, but uh, yeah, coming soon. Oh, I see people, people, our viewers have good memory. They remember everything we ever said. Last of us. <laughs> I, I, I think I saw you draw breath, so I'm, I'm letting you. No, 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 go, go, go ahead. I was drawing <laughs> my breath for you. We, <laughs> thank you. We can, it, this is one of the parts we can't talk much about. Um, we did talk, we did um, announce it. Uh, we, did, we did announce it uh, uh, some time ago. I don't particularly remember when. Um, it is it is a, a franchise that we are extremely excited to work with. Um, the scope to translate the powerful stories is big, right? So we want to we want to do justice, um, but I don't think we can enter any specifics at this point. It exists. <laughs> it's a game. <laughs> We're working on it. Um. Okay, maybe one final question before we wrap up. We're already at 49 minutes. So let's see. <laughs> oh, I think that that's an interesting question, I think, though. Let's see. Not, not, not what I was expecting, but will you ever offer appreciated minis? So context for this, we always show pre-painted minis on our campaign and people are always like, Oh my God, I really need this. <laughs> so, but yeah, but they're talking about something different, though, right? Not pre-painted, talk about pre-shaded, right? Oh, sorry. Kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of uh, 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 sunlight drop. Yeah, kind exactly. Which is kind of, kind of yeah, kind of a wash that is applied at factory level so that the the uh, uh, the deeper parts of the miniature get darker, so it kind of provides more volume. Um, 
I don't think it's in our plans, um, at least not currently. Um, I, I, I would not say we will never offer it, but yeah. Uh, yeah, no, right now it's not something we are pursuing. It's not, it's not a, a, a look we're going for at this point. Yeah. Um, I think that's what we had for today. We talked about a bunch of stuff. You guys gave us updates on every single campaign still in progress. And, um, and we have some very cool reveals and Andrea filled us in on what to expect for next year. So if you guys have anything, any final words to share? That was enough. It's, it's, like, it's like a standoff. Like we're <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's exactly yeah, we, it. We have revealed a little bit. There is, of course, a lot more in the pipeline, in the works. And, and like I said, I, I love the comment section because yes, a lot of this, some of the stuff that you're asking is being worked on beyond beyond what we discussed here. And the good thing is people ask for so much stuff that it's impossible to narrow down what's been asked. So <laughs> I, I, I feel pretty safe saying that. <laughs> and but plus we're working on stuff you didn't mention. That's true. Have some secrets. Um, for myself, I'm just happy, happy to be here, happy to talk to you guys and to our viewers. Um, like I said, I always get um, the sensation that I want to be in person, seeing people again, hopefully next year. We'll see how that goes. Um, um, and um, I guess I'll be here with you later today, Elena, right? On our virtual expo. Yes, we still have two um, panels today. Um, let me just check ah. later on i'll be talking to eric lang and afterwards with you Yeni, yeah, on who back. wants to be at this yeah oh yes both of you right yes both of yes us. and travis so yes. uh, i guess i'll see both of you later on and hopefully all of you in the audience as well and i hope aranya gets a good night's sleep because yeah he stayed up until now and he deserves it <laughs> i'm off to bed <laughs> Bye. Thank, thank Bye. You all. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you very much. Yeah. Ciao.